Hi, in this video, we're going to be talking about warming up and particularly for pickleball. We're going to be talking about why do we warm up and what's the point in warming up. And we're going to be going through some options that can help warm up for pickleball and why this might be appropriate and what not to do if you have an Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy. Hi, I'm Ali. I'm one of the physios from treatmyachilles.com. We are an online virtual physiotherapy platform helping people with all types of Achilles tendon problems. If you would like to book an appointment or find out a little bit more about our service, please have a look at the details below. So we warm up to try and help prevent injury and there is some pretty good evidence out there to show that regular and robust properly performed warm-ups can help reduce injury risk. It warms up your body and prepares it for sport but in a variety of different ways. Our first goal is to raise our temperature and to build up our heart rate so we're preparing our body to move. Our second is then to warm up our muscles so again we're mimicking movements that might be similar to the sports and activities that we're doing to get them prepared so they don't get suddenly overstretched or used. And thirdly we're looking at warming up our joints for the same reason and finally our nervous system and that nervous system means that our nerves are what's in charge of telling our muscles when to relax and when to contract and we're waking that up ready for activity. Some other benefits for warming up can be your mental preparation, so you're getting yourself ready and prepared for activity, and this can help in a competitive environment where we're looking at to play a sport like pickleball, where we're trying to win a match or a game. So what happens if we're trying to play pickleball and we have an Achilles tendon, tendonitis, tendinopathy, tendinosis, whichever term you would like to use? Well, typically, if we have these problems, we may find that our tendon feels a little bit worse when we first start off our activity and then we warm up and that pain or symptoms start to disappear. It then can feel quite comfortable during that time that we're playing. But if we get to the point where we've done a little bit too much, it may or may not come back. Quite commonly also people talk about then their pain might have a later on effect, so an effect where that feels more uncomfortable later that day or indeed the following morning. And that can be pain but also stiffness. So if you've sat still for a long period of time and get up and start to move and feel like it's quite stiff and you're hobbling or again you wake up the next morning and you're hobbling. So a warm up for this is not about trying to make your Achilles feel less stiff in the moment, then do your activity and then deal with the consequences for the next 24 hours. If you're getting symptoms like that, that's a sign that your Achilles is getting a bit overloaded and is unhappy with that activity and that we may need to modify that activity and look to get some rehabilitation exercises and advice for that from a professional. Therefore, if you find that this is the case with you, please do not continue to do this warm up. This is for people that are not having those symptoms and good ideas for pickleball. So should we stretch or not stretch when we're doing our warm ups? Well, there's been some evidence based to show that doing more dynamic based warm ups can be quite useful pre sport. So that's movements that mimic the same sorts of movements that you would do in the activity that you're doing. So in this case, pickleball and then to do the static stretches. So the stretches with holds for 20 to 40 seconds towards the end of the sports in a cool down environment. The evidence base is showing that if you were to do more of the static stretches at the beginning, this could affect your performance during the activity that you're planning to do. Now, when we're looking at, again, a symptomatic Achilles problem, there is a thought process about should we be stretching it? Now, some people can stretch it and it's absolutely no problem, but other people can be irritated by stretching. And we've got a video on stretching and whether that's a good idea for an Achilles tendon, um, tendonitis or tendinopathy, and the information can be found below. But in a nutshell, if you have your Achilles tendon coming from your calf and attaching into the heel bone, when you're doing a typical calf stretch, so like a runner's stretch or where you're dropping off a step, 
that can be where you're bringing your Achilles tendon closer to where it attaches in the heel. Again, completely normal and should happen, but if we have an irritated Achilles tendon, bringing it closer can cause a bit of compression and then irritate. So it's best to consider leaving out the calf stretches if you're in any doubt about whether this is flaring you up and again, seek some advice about whether to do these stretches or not. So one of our goals was to try and increase our heart rate and also increase our core temperature whilst we're warming up. So in a pickleball court, that could be jogging. So you can start with jogging on the spot and you can aim for kicking your bottom and high knees. In a pickleball court, you might decide to do that going around the edge of the court. You could also do side shuffles. So movements to one side and movements back again. And again, you can start to do that along the width of the court and back and you can vary whether your foot goes wider as you go or narrower as you go. And you're looking to do roughly three to four minutes of building up your heart rate with those activities. So after we've got our blood pumping and we've got our heart rate elevated and our blood is now going to our muscles to try and get them to activate and therefore can improve performance, we're starting to look at increasing our range of movement with activities that might be similar to the movements we may do on a court. So good examples could be some side lunges and the side lunges where we come down to one side, making sure your knee is in line with your ankle. And again, you can come over to the other side or you could be stepping into that side lunge back to the middle and again to the opposite side. If for any reason you haven't got space to do your jogging part of the warm up at the beginning, you could use these, for example, if it's raining and you're warming up in the clubhouse or at home, and then you would aim to do forward backward lunges. So again, in this position, your knee is in line with your ankle and your hips are level and forwards. And then you can come back and step if you have enough room, you could lunge and walk forwards whilst lunging. Then we can have a look at the rest of our body. So we've moved around, we've got our hips starting to move and we can also do some nice hip circles. So standing, moving your leg in a outwards and round movement, followed by the opposite direction, like you're opening a gate and now shutting a gate. You can also stand on one leg and swing our legs backwards and forwards and again heel to bottom swings as well to start warming up those knees and again what you do on one side you would then do on the other side so we've looked at hips we've looked at knees now if we were to think about our achilles we could do some of our achilles exercises and they're just simple warm up exercises. And again, if you have an Achilles tendonitis or tendinopathy and you aren't doing these exercises because of pain or symptoms, it's worth getting this checked out before you do that. But you can warm up with raising up onto your tiptoes and back down. And after you've done a few of these, so you're looking to kind of work around about 20 to 30 seconds on each of the movements that we've talked about so far you could start to walk on your tiptoes forwards and backwards and then ankle circles in the air now with pickleball obviously we also need to warm up our upper body so if we've gone in our core area we're looking that when we're playing shots we need stability and rotation in our upper body so we could be doing some twists we could be doing arm swings as we twist, starting to bring our shoulders in. And as we warm up through our shoulders, some shoulder circles, both backwards and forwards as well. And also in standing before we come onto the floor, you could be doing some side stretches. Now, if you're not courtside, and you're also warming up inside, 
you could come down onto the floor from upper body and arm and do some thread the needles where you're reaching through and back and through and back and if you can't get down to the floor you can stay in the air and go up and down as much as you can. So by the time you've done your jogging around the court and you've done your lower body movements, trunk movements and upper body movements, it may have taken you 15 to 20 minutes to get completely warm or in some cases you may have less time of that and you may cherry pick some of those activities. As long as what you think through is what movements do my body need to do to perform this activity? Have I done something for my shoulders, my core, my hips, my knees and my Achilles and ankles? And if I've done something that raises my heart rate for three to four minutes before I start doing all of these things, then that is an excellent way to prepare your body for activity and in this case, pickleball.